Hello, my lovely nail enthusiasts. Welcome back to my channel. For those returning, glad to see you again. For those new in the room, let me introduce myself. My name is Rocky, and I have been a home nail tech and hobbyist for the past 20 years with a deep love and passion for nail enhancements and artistry. So it's Saturday while I'm recording this. It's been raining for the past day or so in my part of Florida. It's really wet out. It's covered in yellow pollen. So I have decided to stay inside today, give my allergies a break and avoid that nonsense. And we are going to finally swatch these colors that I got from my first color scoop with e -Nail Couture. I got this order about a month ago. It came in the same box as my Super Scoop. I already showed off the Super Scoop, which is going to be... Um, I don't know if I figured that part out yet. We'll find out, but I'll try to post the link somewhere if they still allow you to even do that. Uh, today, though, we are going to check out the 24 colors that were offered up from the Color Scoop. And this is how they came packaged i just kind of moved this one so you could see like down inside but as you can see they are very nicely packaged all separated up at the time i purchased this back in february it was the first run of this type of scoop it was 35 dollars for 24 gel polishes so it's basically a dollar 40 per polish these are full-size gel polishes, meaning they're easily going to be 8 milliliters or more. This one here I randomly pulled out was 15 milliliters. I also had a discount from the Lunar New Year sale. So realistically, I paid $24.50 for this uh, color scoop right here. That's before taxes, and I, as always, have free shipping because I just put my order over a hundred dollars because you trick me every time with free shipping <laughs> uh the scoops this scoop and the super scoop they sold out very quickly i did see though they brought them back in march they now are selling it for 59.99 for 24 polishes so it's roughly two dollars and 33 cent per bottle and just like with any scoop or mystery box of course I have to go see, is this item still on the website? And if so, would I really have purchased it? Because, yes, I don't own a lot of these colors from e -Nail Couture. But at the same time, just because I don't own that color, if the scoop is like 22 colors I'm never really going to use, or I'm getting a lot of duplicates or a lot of similar shades, what? where's the value then? So... As always, sit back, relax, because you know, you know your girl Rocky doesn't know how to do short form content. And let's get into some nail talk. Be strong. Be strong. As always, nail besties, thank you for hanging out with me here at my nail station. So, as I'm getting the nail station ready, I had this like, you know, cool story I was going to tell about like a mystery box and like ask you for like your guys's like, you know, stories about mystery boxes. And I went into doing the swatches in this lost footage now. And during this footage, I was showing off this Beatles peel off a base gel coat and this top coat that I purchased. I want people to keep this in mind. I buy these things with my own money. Um, I didn't, no one influenced me to buy this. I've bought Beatles in the past. I've had relatively okay luck with their polishes. It was, you know, the most economical thing I could get on Amazon and get it within two days. So that way I could get it here in plenty of time to record the video for the weekend. And I go and I swatch this down on a swatch stick. Let me... Yeah. I will even get out uh, exam Exhibit A, if you will. This is Exhibit A. This is the swatch stick that I was using. This is the peel-off base gel. I'll just let you see what it looks like. It's a nice little watery, kind of a little bit on the thicker side. Little, little thick water situation there. And we're laying it down in a nice thin coat. We put it... Uh, in exhibit B, 
uh, if the jury will, this is our e-nail couture lamp, which we have seen before. We know how she works. We know uh, there is no problem there, if it will please the jury. So, I put this in. I think it even states on the back, because I wanted to read, and we'll make sure. Yep, it says to cure under a UV LED lamp for 60 to 90 seconds. Okay. Guess what? I have a 90 second button. Okay. All right, so <laughs> I put it in. I cure it for the 90 seconds, and I know that's still going to be a tacky layer. Uh, the tacky layer is always going to be there if the formula doesn't say that it's a no-wipe formula. That tacky layer is the inhibitor layer. It's meant to be there. So I, I knew that tacky layer was going to be there. That's The base coat is there, so that way the gel polish has something to hold on to. Makes sense. But it was still really wet. I mean, I could take a, a cuticle stick and I could play around and I could draw things in it. And it was moving and self-leveling back into place. That is a sign the gel is not cured. So I put it in the lamp for another 90 seconds. Same result. And I was like, okay, maybe... Maybe I'm overthinking it, you know, it's because of this nail. I, who who knows? Who knows? So I continue moving on. So I continue moving on, and I, I will show you screenshots from the lost footage, because what I have over here wouldn't be fair. I've already trashed it, and I'm throwing it back away again, because I don't even want to look at it right now. Uh... <laughs> So as you can see from some of the snippets here from the lost footage, the gel has, the color has totally separated away uh, from the peel off base coat. And, and please keep in mind, it, it had only been sitting there probably for less than five minutes and it was already separating away like that. So I'll play around with this some more. I, I'm just playing it out with the first time here on camera. Maybe it's because of this nail. Maybe I put some extra oil on there when I touched it. Who knows? But we will not be using this peel off base coat today because of how badly it was altering the way the nails looked. And I'll just go back to my regular old method of guess what we'll just soak it in some water and peel it off it's not a big deal we'll get over it so now that that rant is over i hope all of you guys are having a wonderful amazing day if there is a peel off polish that you can recommend i would love to hear about them in the comments i prefer gels but if there's a really good non-gel one that you guys have found that you're using definitely let me know in the comments i would love to give it a try see how it works it has been like i said a long time since i've used uh peel off gel polish so maybe maybe i'm doing something wrong you know, I never want to, even though I'm not sponsored in any way, shape, or form, I never want to go in and blame the company right away. There could be some type of user application or user error that is happening during the application process. So before I go in on Beatles, because I have relatively good luck with most of their nail polishes I've bought in the past, before I go in, let me make sure it's not a user error. Um, before we say it's a product error. And <laughs> speaking of not being sponsored, bringing on the e nail couture gel polishes, we are going to start swatching them here. Uh, I'm going to start off with the gel polishes that come from their zero through like, like 100 or 200 listing. I'll throw it up here on the page just so you can see what it looks like. This is number 007. It is a lovely silver. I already know what these colors look like. So it's not fair. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> but this here is number 007. It is a lovely purple lilac -y lavender color with a gold shift inside of it. And this one here is a little bit on the thicker side when it comes to the color, so you won't have to worry about any type of patching or shadowing. I still am using a lighter touch and going in more with a float method rather than a regular painting method. 
so we can get maximum payoff from that glitter. And also I feel like floating is going to less likely give you that streakiness that comes when you use a shimmer polish. And that is number 007. And what was cool is a lot of these polishes were like in sequential order. So I feel like I, I own like good amounts of their line now. This is 008, which is a green color with a lovely glittery iridescent green gold shimmer in it. And please excuse the nails. I just took my nails off earlier in the day. I'm getting ready to dye my hair and do a spa pedicure and it's just much easier to do those things when I don't have nails on. Plus when I'm doing that spa pedicure my hands are in water a lot so I don't want to break down the gel or the glue mostly that I use to stick on my nails because I'm a press on girl. Press ons for days. This is number 008 it is a very sheer transparent green that is used for the base color but it does not have any patchy or streakiness to it definitely a color you could probably want to put a second coat on to get a little bit more of the green base out of it or you could put it on top of a white polish or some other colored background to make that green pop a little bit more and still keep the shimmer. This is 010. It's like a concrete gray kind of beige tan color. Very beige neutral mom feel. Not a color I would really wear a whole lot. It's like a taupe color. Can't think there's not a lot of nail art that I use that would even require using this color. It is a little bit on the thicker side, so what I like is it could double down. It's not just a gel polish, but also some type of gel liner or art gel because of the thickerness to it and how opaque it is. Next up, we have 019. This looks like it's going to be, if I recall, this was like a red with a bit of an orange under hue feel to it. It has like a sunset. It's almost like a sunset red. You can see a little tight, a slight touch of some pink in there as I'm swatching it out. So it's like that pinky sunset kind of red color. Makes me think a lot of the lipstick that women would wear in the 80s and 90s when I was younger. That bright red lipstick. But it is a very pretty color. I could see this being used a lot for especially a Christmas set of nails that definitely screams that Christmas red to me. Also a good Valentine's Day red. This is 021. This one is like a soft lilac almost mauvey kind of color and all these polishes so far are self leveling very well as they do typically with the e-nail couture ones I'm not seeing any hatching or shadowing so far a lot of these have been a little bit on the thicker side like I mentioned with the beige ones so a lot of these I can feel doubling down as some type of gel art liner also. There we go. I'm just trying to get all the little brush strokes out of there and they are all leveling out. You don't have to overwork the gel like I was just now. A lot of polishes are going to even out those brush strokes on their own. You just have to have patience. 
something I don't always have. <laughs> this next one is 022. It's a lovely lime light bright green. This reminds me a lot of the green I already got from them as their gel liner green. And it's got the similar consistency and opaqueness to it. So this could definitely double down as some type of art liner. You would just need to get out a little palette and get your little art brushes out, your little liner brushes. I am applying it on probably a little thicker than usual because these nails are transparent. So I'm trying to get a two coat payoff, but in a one coat application. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these six popped in the lamp so that way I can keep clearing out space and make everything go at the same time. So we're just constantly in rotation. I'm going to cure these for 90 seconds. And while those are in the lamp curing, we're going to get into our next six of polishes. But I will be right back. I'll pop these in and we will, through the magic of editing, it's all ready to go. Uh, as you can see the light going in the background, we've got the first six in. So let's get our next six going. How are you guys today? I know I asked at the beginning. I really appreciate all of the talk that's going on, the comments, the questions that you're asking. I've worked in customer service some way, shape, or form for the last 20 years. So I... I low-key kind of enjoy answering questions from the general public. It's what I've done anyway. It's kind of my comfort zone. <laughs> this one here is 023. It is a beautiful light blue. It almost makes me think of like Robin's egg blue. It is a very pretty spring blue. Again, a little bit of a thicker formula, which I'm a fan of. I like the thicker formula polishes. I don't want something that's really runny or liquidy. I feel it's too hard to control. That's part of the reason why I am not big on regular nail polish like I am anymore. I don't enjoy how runny the polish is. This is definitely one coat i'm would probably do two coats it is a little patchy right here in this upper corner i can see some little peaking and sheerness it could be the way i applied it as well i've noticed when i'm playing uh applying nail polish on camera i'm a little bit more awkward because i'm trying to make sure you guys can see the polish and the color trying to get an idea of how it's being applied this is number 024. This is a lovely green color. And I don't wear a lot of green, but the shimmer in here has me very interested. I can see a lot of blue, kind of purple, green, almost yellow shift going on in the iridescent glitter. And if I recall, yes, this one, late, it just comes out just so pigmented it's so nice it looks like a oil it makes me think of an oil slick but with glitter in it and it's almost like the base coat you can't even tell the base color is a green because of how much shimmers in there it's so pretty i really like this color for not being a person that likes green i and i like this color I think it's the glitter in there that's doing it for me. I can see a lot of the purple glitter. Oh, man, it's so pretty. That is beautiful. I love that color. I may. I, I haven't done my toenails yet. I may use that one for my toenails here. <laughs> that is pretty. Next, we're going to do 027, which is a gold color, which also has some gold iridescent glitter flakes in it. And this one, again, it is definitely one coat magic. 
You don't have to go in a whole lot. It's definitely on the thicker side. That payoff there is there in the base color. It is highly pigmented. That's what it looks like from the underside. But definitely no peeking. No shadowing. And this one, like I've mentioned a couple times already, I probably sound like a broken record. It's on the thicker side. So if you don't have a gold art gel, you can definitely get away with using a gel polish on the thicker side like this. And boom, there's your gold uh, accent and your gold gel liner. This one here, when I was swatching it in the lost footage, at first I thought 031 was going to be like this kind of chocolatey cocoa brown color. But it's because of the lighting in here, this is actually going to be a very pretty burgundy. Ooh, that's pretty. I don't have a lot of burgundy polishes. So this was nice to get. It's something I wouldn't normally purchase. I don't buy a lot of red polishes. Burgundy, you would think I would because it's got purple in it. You use purple to help get to this shade, but nope, not a shade I really particularly use. I'm more of a purple, like ex actual purple and blues pinks i'm not too big on lilacs and lavenders because i'm not a big pastel person only because pastels i feel be are normally in a transparent and i like more opaque nail polish but this is 031 which it's insane what it looks like on here compared to here Next up, we're going to move into some glitters. We're going to go with 033 here first. And if I recall, it was a clear color with the glitter built into it. Yes. So it's a very clear color. You could definitely get away with using this as a topper over another nail polish if you wanted. But it has tons of iridescent glitter in here that gives off like a blue, purple, pink, yellow, silver vibe. And if I recall, this next one was another one where it's like, it, does it match the lid? <laughs> when I looked at this one here, it almost looks like it's going to be a bronze color with like a rosy shimmery pink inside of it but when we actually swatch it it still has that bronziness to it but it's almost more of like a silvery golden shift but still somehow reads like a rose pink color it's a very interesting polish it's definitely not one i would normally pick up it is definitely well outside my shade comfort zone. But it covers very well. There's no peeking. There's no shadowing. While it is a more transparent polish, you can't see all the brush strokes and the lines left behind. So very interesting set of six colors so far. And we'll pull out the first six that I did. They got a little stuck together in there. <laughs> but this is the first six when I got done curing them. What they will look like. Very pretty. Looks like I'll be able to break some of these off quite easily too already. <laughs> Alright, the next six are in. We're going to move these six off to the side. Actually, let's check the tack chest. That one's kind of tacky. That one's kind of tacky. That one's really tacky. So is that one. That one. And that one. Okay. 
and that's what I've noticed with this line here, the ones that just come in the bottle that say gel polish on it in this particular lineup or model, is they have still a tacky layer left over. So next we're going to go in here with 036. I'm going to pull out my next set of six nails. This one I haven't got to swatch yet. This is where uh, I was like, you know what? This peel off gel base coat is not working. I'm done. I give up. So this one is what the topper looks like. Oh, that. How have I not ordered this purple yet? I n I don't have this one. I already went through all these polishes and, and checked every single one out there. And somehow I don't have 036. And this is a purple I would wear all day long. Oh my goodness. I love... It's like the perfect, like, gothy, emo, purple, black. Ugh. Oh. Oh, I love that color. Yep, that's a winner. I, I like that one. <laughs> Next, we're going to go into some sh more shades. I wouldn't, I would probably wear this one, 037. This looks like something normally within my wheelhouse. I'm pretty sure I already have a polish very similar out there to it. Ooh, I love that. Can oh. That's some consistency. It's so glam and opaque. I love that. I love when you just paint a polish on and it's a transparent nail and instantly, like, you don't even know it was a transparent nail anymore. You have no idea. And it's almost like a... I thought at first it was going to be like a have a lot of blue in it but it's more on the green side it's a very teal green there is a little bit of a blue undertone in certain lights next is 044 which is this mustard yellow color which i i definitely would not wear uh <laughs> This is way outside my comfort zone. But you know what? Even though it's outside my comfort zone, it's a nice formula. It's applying very nice. It's self-leveling. It is very opaque. It's a creme-like polish. It's going to make any transparent nail disappear. And you won't even know it was a transparent nail underneath because of how pigmented this mustard yellow is and again not a color i would normally buy but it's not the ugliest mustard yellow ever i've seen uglier ones <laughs> there might be some way i can find a way to incorporate that in some type of nail art design look somehow i'm not sure yet but it's a good formula. <laughs> this one here is 057. It's almost like a bitter burnt orange color. Again, not a color I normally would pick out. But the formula is very nice. One coat payoff. It's thick, so I could even use this like a gel liner. It's a very nice color. I don't mind it. I Again, I don't know when I'm going to wear it, but I don't mind the color. Luckily, I have been getting into doing other people's nails, so there might be other people more interested in some of these colors that I'm using. Maybe they might have some cool creative idea. And there's nothing wrong if you like this mustard yellow color. When I call it ugly, like, it's not ugly. If, if you like this color, that's great. Everybody likes something. Just this isn't my personal preference, and that's totally okay. Just like I bet a lot of you don't like purple, so it's totally okay. <laughs> this is 062. 
This looks like it's going to be a sheer color with a lot of glitter packed into it. Or maybe like some type of light gray color. It is super watery. Oh my goodness. It is water. There we go. Woo! <laughs> wow. That is a lot of glitter. Wow, we. It's like a champagne neutral nude base color with tons of like iridescent glitter built into it. That is very pretty. This one too, I feel like you could probably get away just like this one. You could get away with using it as a nail topper over another polish. Let's see. Let's try this little red guy out here. We're going to try 033 on top of 019 and see what happens. You know, you're like, oh man, I really wish I had a red polish. But I wish that red polish had a glitter, but I don't want it to always have a glitter. Ooh, well there you go. There you go. If you've got some clear glitter hanging around... There you go. I instantly turned that bland, boring red nail into a glitterified nail. <laughs> How easy was that? <laughs> that is pretty. That is nice. So that is all of the gel polishes. Next, I'm going to move into one that is new for me. I've never used this formula before from them. This is part of their A Pink line. This is number 017. It has this adorable little rhinestone on the top. It's so cute. Uh, but the 301 meaning is that it has a base color, a base gel, and a rubber base coat uh, gel. So I'm already feeling certain ways right now about peel off base coats, y'all. <laughs> This is also supposed to be a nail strengthener. It's supposed to contain vitamin E and calcium. They list 017 as a lavender with a candy glitter on the website. And I can see some of those candy glitter specks in there, like some of the pinks and yellow and little white pieces in here. We'll see how well it translates out as we are trying to swipe this on because it's definitely a little bit on the thicker side because it's going to be a base coat plus a actual color plus gel plus a nail strengthener so it's got a lot it's got to work it's got a lot of heavy lifting to do there I'm going to try my best to float this on there so we can get the maximum payoff with the candy pieces as possible. And I am interested to see what happens when we do a second coat of this because I do feel like I got a decent amount of the candy pieces. But I wonder what happens if you put on a second coat. Will you get an even bigger, better payoff? And these were the last six that we just did. Oh man, I love that color. You might be going on my toes today. <laughs> I normally do glitters on my toes. So I think you, you're going on my toes today. Very pretty colors. So I'm going to pop these ones back into the lamp. We're going to then put a second coat of this one on and try out my last six polishes up from the color scoop. So while we're waiting for those to dry, I am curious. So we're waiting for those to dry. Now that I found this, how well do these just pop off without any base coat at all on. All right, so the last six are done. That's the one we just put the glitter on. This is what the last ones will look like once they are cured. 
Yeah, I can definitely tell that's got some peel off base coat like ideas to it. All of them very sticky and tacky. Even that one there has some stickiness to it. So let's see what happens when we do a second coat on top of, of this A Pink 017. Do we get more of this candy glitter payoff? Or will we just totally ruin it? Yeah, I feel like we would have probably been better off just doing one coat. I feel that would have been the, the pay. I don't think you need two coats of this. I, I had enough of the candy glitter in one coat. I had enough color in one coat. Probably is a one coat top and go situation. What we're going to move into next is... I think we're going to go with the fun gels next. Yeah, let's do the fun gels next. So these are the three fun gels that I got. These two here, I could not find on their website anymore. Maybe I just didn't look hard enough, but 086 and 090. These two I couldn't find. I could find this one here that we're going to swatch first, 050. This, King, this one was from the King Candy Fun Gel. Candy Tone Collection. Ooh, it was a mouthful. And as you can see, it's like a sheer pink base color with like some pink iridescent. Eh, more like pink, solid pink purple glitter specks in there. Yes, yeah, just like a standard like glittery shiny pink. It's not iridescent. Very cute idea. I could see this being a lot, being used a lot for uh, like Valentine's Day nails. It's got that right amount of glitter in it. Plus you still have that sheer pink that people love. You could put easily put a white on top of that tip. Call it a French and be good to go. In fact, you know what? I will even pull out, once we dry this, I will go pull out my white polish and we will do a French on there and see what it looks like. <laughs> Next, we're going to try 086, which I'll try to look a little harder when I'm editing this video. Maybe I just didn't type it in right or there's some other terms I could have searched by. Maybe just manually go through each polish one by one. But... This one here, I could not find on the website. It's a very sheer pink with a lot of pink gold shift glitter. Almost like an iridescent feel. And last what we have here is 090. And this one, okay, it is going to be like what the topper looks like. It's like a yellowy banana, mang yeah, like a banana yellow kind of color with some iridescent shift glitter. That's pretty. That is super pretty. I'm not a big yellow fan. I don't wear a whole lot of yellow, but with the summer coming up, I do have some ideas for some fruit nails I'd like to do. And this yellow would be a great accent color. Again, I bet you could even use this over just a regular, what happens? A, look at how snazzy you can suddenly make that mustard yellow. Ooh, that's pretty. <laughs> that's the cool thing about glitter polishes like this when they're on the sheer side is you can get away with putting a color underneath them and still keeping that color payoff from the original color plus keeping all of that beautiful glitter color. And 
you don't have to ruin your polish for it. These ones here, this is the Precious Mineral Collection. I was able to find all of these on the website. The first one I'm starting up with uh, might look a little familiar. This was in the Super Scoop video that I did not too long ago. This is number 208 from the Power Up Collection. And it also has that candy glitter in it like the A-Pink does. But this one here is a clear or transparent polish with all of that candy glitter built in there as well as some actual shiny kind of silvery gold glitter. And again, it is a thing that you could definitely put on top of another nail. I've mentioned this before, if you are not the best at encapsulating nail art or you f are like me and just feel like it takes way too much time, this is a very easy way to achieve that look. You still get to use little candy cute glitter pieces and uh, have your cake and eat it too. <laughs> Next we are going to look at number 211. This blue is very intriguing to me. It's from their Puzzle Moon Collection. I love the little shift of glitter in there. It gives very like nighttime, bedtime feel blue. With, oh, I love that gold shift in there. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, I love that color. You're beautiful. You are so beautiful. And it's got a nice one coat consistency. All of my brush strokes are like melting away the second that I'm laying that color down. It is nice and opaque. We don't have shadowing. Ooh. Number 211. I like you. I like you a lot. And last up, we are going to look at number 215. This one's from the Roly Poly <laughs> Collection. And they have that lid on there, girl. Okay. Thank God I didn't wear nails today while trying to break that open. So this one here, I'm noticing... There we go. Little, little on the thicker, clumpier side. It looks like it's going to be a sheer pink with a lot of glitter in it. It does have a lot of glitter in there. My goodness, it is caked in like cake frosting <laughs> this is a very very thick consistency i mean when i compare this to cake frosting i'm not joking like i'm i'm not painting it on it's literally just floating on off onto the brush and coming out that thick and look at that it's so you can't even see that it was a transparent nail underneath it has so much glitter and pigmentation and payoff inside of there. That is insane. I like that one a lot more than I thought I would. Wow. That is pretty. All right, so the final test is we have to put these into our oven, let them bake for 90 seconds. All these sets, I've been letting them bake for 90 seconds just to make sure they have the maximum amount of cure. So I think we're going to pull myself back into subject. Reel it in, girl. <laughs> like I said, there are six polishes that came just based upon the swatches that I would have purchased out of the color scoop. And those six came to $57.45. So was luck on my side? Yes. Barely. Just barely the mystery box luck was still on my side. And like I had mentioned earlier, they did bring back the color and super scoop. And I feel like just one box isn't enough data for me or sample size to truly determine is this a good value. Because I've also noticed YouTube is wanting to suggest a lot of Enel Couture review videos to me. And I think that's amazing. There are so many people out there talking about products, nail products in general, giving multiple ideas and, and feedback on those products. So I, 
I love that there are so many of us out there, but when a lot of people start talking about something, eventually the company hears about it. And I know they want to give us a good value. All companies, I think, deep down inside want to give, real companies want to give a good value to the consumer and give them what they are paying for. But sometimes they don't realize how good of a value they are giving. And when people uh, like us go out and, and, ex and share what type of value we're really getting and, and showing that dollar number off, it may make that company go, whoa, we might be too generous and, and scale it back a little bit. So that's really what this order was about. I want to see, because of all of the talk, are they going to scale back their boxes? Are we going to see more duplicate colors? Are we not going to see high value items like the brushes inside of the Super Scoop box? So definitely stay tuned because I do have both of those boxes already. They came in this week and are sitting next to me ready to be opened and broken into. I cannot wait to start plugging the items inside the spreadsheet and seeing all of what is inside of that box. But my nail besties, I think that is going to wrap up today's adventure. A heartfelt thank you to all my viewers for joining me on this journey. And if you've enjoyed this video and want to see more Nailtastic content, your subscription and likes mean so much to me. Your comment, your feedback, any questions that you have, they are always welcome. I am definitely here to answer them. Maybe as we grow as a community, other people will want to pitch in and also give you their ideas and answers to those questions. But as always, my nail besties, like my friend Sailor Mercury said, be pure, be honest, be beautiful. Thanks, my nail besties. I love you. Bye.